Well, after an amazing eighth-inning comeback from the Toronto Blue Jays, it falls short as they lose 4-3 in 11 innings to the Detroit Tigers and end the four-game series with a split. Now, for anybody saying, well, it's a fair of a series, you should have won the series. Well, I mean, I guess we could say that. But in the end, it's a split, and you got to take positives. That is the story of the Jays' 162-game schedule. Take positives from losses. Now, if you want to take a positive of the first, two, I guess the first two losses for the Jays, they've both come in extra innings, so they both fought hard, and they both, you know, yeah, you lose them in extras, which is tough. You know, they're, they're winnable games right there, but it happens, and the Jays are two and two to start the year. Now, Trent Thornton gets the ball for the Toronto Blue Jays today. His first big league start, his first big league appearance. For the Toronto Blue Jays. And how did the Jays acquire him? Well, he was acquired in the offseason for Alenmus Diaz. Now, everybody initially were thinking, well, Diaz was so good for this team. And this guy's never touched the big leagues and he's 25 years old. A terrible trade. Yet they've never seen this guy before. Trent Thorne today in his first big league outing. Goes five innings. Two hits. No walks. And eight strikeouts. That is a Blue Jays franchise record for a first start for a Blue Jay. Eight Ks in five innings for Trent Thornton. Great job by him. He was locating his pitch as well. And the thing I love about the way he pitched, not only did he only give up two hits and no runs, no walks. And eight Ks. He was throwing strikes and he was getting swings and misses. And he was, he, was, he was throwing quality pitches. He was never really in any danger. He was just doing a really, really good job. And now I, who, who relieved him? Well, Sam Gavilio came out. And I, this is the one move, the one move from Charlie that I'm not a huge fan of, that I wasn't a huge fan of, just because, well, I'll, I'll get to why later on in the video. But Sam Gavilio did go an inning, gave up a hit, no runs, and struck out a guy. So he didn't have a bad inning. I'm not saying he did anything wrong. But I'll get to why it all happened uh, in a little bit here. Tim Mesa came out for the seventh inning and had a rough time. Gave up a hit, walked a batter, and gave up two runs. Now, ideally, they were kind of given up by Javi Guerra, who came in the next. Uh, came in next after Tim Mesa. And the problem I had with Javi Guerra, guys, is there was a guy at third. I think it was Nick Castellanos, I think, with one out. And you need a strikeout here. It's not going to be easy, but you need a strikeout. And it's Mikey Matuk at the plate. And you get him. And that's a huge strikeout. Now you've got two. All you got to get is the next batter out. And you're out of the inning and you're feeling great. He hits the next guy. And if I'm not mistaken, he might have... He, he hits the guy to load the bases. And that's a problem. Because now you got nowhere to put anybody. But you have the number nine hitter up, Jordy Mercer. So it should be okay. He can't throw a strike. It's a 3-1 count. And I'm like, oh God. You gotta give him a fastball here. You, you can't throw a curveball to the number nine hitter with the bases loaded on a 3-1 count. He throws him a curveball. Ball four. Walks in the first run of the game. And I'm like, what the heck were you thinking? I don't get what he was thinking. I, I, I really don't. I mean, I know he was trying to go for a swing and miss, but you have the bases loaded. Just get some contact and there's an out at any base. I don't know. I don't agree with that. If you guys have any uh, have any other opinions towards that pitch selection, you guys go right ahead and let me know. And, and then he gives up a little soft kind of opposite field single by Candelario, the leadoff guy who was fantastic today. You know, and that's a two-run single, and then now it's a three-nothing lead by the Tigers, and we're all sitting here like, "You've got to be kidding me!" Like, really? But then they decide to bring out the young right-handed pitcher, Elvis Luciano. And the thing I love about Charlie, I didn't agree with the whole Sam Gavillo deal. You know why? Because he only went one inning, and I didn't really like the timing of when he went in the game. Because in the latter half of the innings, and we'll get to that in a second, Luciano comes out there. And he's facing Nick Castellanos. Whoa, what was that? Nick Castellanos in his first big league outing. Remind you of somebody? Roberto Osuna. In his very first outing, he faced Alex Rodriguez and struck him out. Now, this Luciano faced Nick Castellanos. I mean, I, I, I guess history-wise, excuse me, guys. History-wise, a very different, I guess, scenario. 
But he gets Nick Castellanos. I think he broke his bat as well. To fly out to, I think it was Randall Gritchick in right field. To end the inning. Big job there. Now, he could have taken out of the game there. And put in somebody else. But instead, Charlie's like, hey, kid, get back out there and face Miguel Cabrera. Well, all right then. Now, ideally, <laughs> Miguel Cabrera does hit a ball to the wall and... Uh, that rhymes. Didn't mean that. And uh, Teoscar Hernandez makes a great leaping catch. I mean, I'm, I, I looked at it, I'm like, that's, that's a pretty darn good catch. Luciano loves it, obviously. And he ends up getting through that inning. He does get a couple runners on, but he does get out of the inning, gives up a hit, walks a batter, but doesn't give up a run, strikes out a guy in an inning and a third. Great job by the youngster. He is the second youngest player to ever throw on a Blue Jays jersey and play a game, of course. Great job by Luciano, the Rule 5 pick, and I'm so excited to watch this kid pitch the rest of the season. It's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. Ken Giles comes out in the ninth inning, gives up a hit, back clean inning. Good job by Ken Giles. Joe Biagini gives up a walk. No problem for Big Joe. Gets a couple strikeouts. Clean inning for him. Problem, though. And I, I'll get to the offense in a bit because I know you guys want to talk about that. Thomas Pannone has to come out in the 11th inning. You know why? He's the only guy left. This is where I get to the whole Sam Gavilio thing. Because I'm like, look, Pannone, I, I'm, me personally, I'm not a huge Thomas Pannone fan. He's shown a lot of inconsistency. And he misses with his pitches quite often, at least from my eyes. He pitched an inning, gave up three hits, and he gave up that one run as the Jays lost 4-3 in 11 innings. Now let's back it on up a little bit to the eighth inning. Where the Jays are down 3 nothing, and they've got no offense to this point. They've got nothing going. You know, and, and even going into the inning, we're all like, well, we don't really really expect anything out of this. Because they bring in their setup guy, J.J. Jimenez. And you expect Green to come out in the ninth inning, and that's going to be it because it's a 3 nothing game. And Lourdes Gurriel grounds out to start the bottom of the eighth. And we're like, yeah, well, he's had a really tough start to the year. I think he's pressing way too hard. He's trying. He reminds me a lot of Norman Powell for the Toronto Raptors, right? Powell had a great rookie season with his team, showed a lot of promise, and then he tries way too hard the next couple of years, and he doesn't play that well. And you see him this year, Norman Powell, and he's having a great season. But for Gurriel, he put up a great 60-odd games for this team last year, put up, put up records for this team when it comes to the multi-hit games of 11 straight multi-hit games, which is crazy. But this year... Again, he's trying to do way too much with all the big guys, Donaldson and all those guys, Kenrich Morales and all those guys out of the lineup now. He's trying to do everything. And he doesn't have a hit yet this year. He's pushing way too hard. And you could arguably say it's because he's playing second base instead of shortstop now. It's a change of position as well, so it's kind of difficult for Lourdes Gurriel Jr. Next batter, Kevin Pillar. Doesn't have a hit this year. Ropes a single into left field. He's now got a hit on the year. The Jays got a guy on base. But I mean, it's a 3-1, three, 3 nothing game and you got a one-out single. It really doesn't feel like anything. But somebody who has been red hot. Uh, I was going to say Freddie Galvis. Richard Urania. And this guy, the 23-year-old. You know, I mean, he's a, he's a guy that I think is going to be a pretty damn good player for this team. He's shown it every single year that he is, he is progressed. And it is so good to see that he made the team out of camp. And Freddie Galvez, by the way, I, I didn't I didn't mention him. I did mention him by accident. But I was going to mention him later. Because he has the Iron Man streak of go, playing, get the number, 328 straight games. Playing, not sitting on the bench. Getting into 328 games. Now, with Richard Urena getting the start today, that is in jeopardy. Good news is, guys, though, Freddie Galvis does get in that bat later in the game, so we're, we're all good there. So that the streak continues. But Richard Urena, on this play, hits a ground rule double to right field, and it obviously bounces over the fence, and that sucks because Kevin Pillar was coming around third, and he would have scored on the play, but he has to go back to third because of the ground rule double. Second and third, and... One out for the number nine hitter, Luke Maley. Now, Charlie Montoyo does something Gibby never did. Grow a pair and make a big risk. Could have been a very high reward, but it could have also been a big risk for the team, and it could have also not really worked. But there was really no, I guess, downside to it. Because what does he decide to do? He removes Luke Maley out of the lineup, 
puts in Rowdy Teles. Now, everybody thinking will be like, well, yeah, I would do that. Like, why wouldn't you? The only reason be, Danny Jansen was your DH today. With, with Luke Bailey now out of the lineup, Danny Jansen has to be your catcher. Therefore, you have no designated hitter. Now you have to play National League rules and have to have the pitcher hit in the ninth spot. It's a big risk. Now, like I said, it's a low-risk move because if you don't get a big hit here, it doesn't really affect you because that number nine spot's probably not going to come around again because you're down 3 nothing and it looks like you're going to lose. However, it could be really good if Rowdy Tellez comes up big and boy, oh boy, for the big fella that he is, he gets a pitch down, and I don't even know if it was a strike, it was down, and he gets barrel to baseball and uses his big barrel and belts it to center field and over the fence and out of the yard. We are tied at three. Rowdy Telez, he's jacked up round in the bases. The bench is jacked up. Shelly Duncan, former New York Yankee, by the way, and the bench coach for the one of the bench coaches for the Toronto Blue Jays. He's holding on to Charlie Montoyo as the as the pitch is coming in and as his whole you know has his whole as bat holy smokes as his whole at bat is developing, and as the hit comes on, Duncan starts shaking him like Charlie's not he's getting up there. Hey, just keep it easy there, Shelly Duncan. He gets jacked up and then it's gone. And he's shaking him even more. Everyone's fired up in the bench. Everyone is jacked up because he makes the big risky move. But it pays off in the end as you tie the game at three. It's beautiful to see Rowdy Telez with the bing dinger. And, um, I mean, then you look at, uh, you know, Trent Thornton with the great start. Elvis Luciano with the great outing. And then you throw young Rowdy Telez with a big home run. The young one's getting it done. And obviously we talked about losing in extra innings. But that uh, doesn't matter. One play I want to get to, though, in extra innings. I think it was in the 10th inning. The Jays had a chance to walk it off. Freddie Galvis at the plate. Richard Urania at second base because he hits another double because why not? Galvis rips the ball to shortstop. It gets knocked down by Jordy Mercer. So obviously Richard Urania is moving in the pitch. I think there's two out already anyways. And it kind of goes away from Jordy Mercer. He Urania rounds third and you see the third base coach, Louis Rivera. He's got his arms up like, no, no, don't go. Urania is like, I don't see you, coach. And I'm going right through the stop sign. Now, I can rip your Richard Urania for blowing through the stop sign. However, Jordy Mercer throws from his gut. I mean, he dives and he's kind of crawling towards the ball. Grabs the ball, kind of goes, Ugh, towards home plate. And it's a one bounce right to the chest of the catcher. From his knees, from his belly. I mean, really? And then he gets, he gets Richard Urania out at the plate. That's It happens. It happens. I mean, through nine times out of ten, a guy who's throwing from his knees home from, you know, deep in, deep in shortstop ain't making that throw. But Jordy Mercer made a heck of a play, and he got us out, and then in the top half of the 11th, they won it. It happens. But there's lots of positives to take from this game. You can't really be angry. I mean, you can because they lost, but you, if you want to think about the long run and the, the young guys and how they did, they did well. Use that. That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to stay sane. That's the way I'm doing it. All right. In the next series for the Toronto Blue Jays, guys, they welcome in the lonely Baltimore Orioles. I guess last year's lonely Baltimore Orioles. How are they doing today? They're playing the Yankees today. They're beating the Yankees 4 0. Excuse me. What's okay? What's going on? I think they beat the Yankees already one game, too. The Orioles are going to win the AL East. Okay. I, I, I'm kind of getting out of control there. Uh, the Jays welcome in those Orioles tomorrow night. As they welcome, uh, Sean Reed Foley gets the start. That's right, Clayton Richard. Uh, he hasn't even pitched yet, and he's already hurt. So that's, uh, okay. Welcome to the Blue Jays, bud. Sean Reed Foley gets his first start of the year, obviously, and it's great to see for Sean Reed Foley. Had a rough, a rough, kind of a rough stint with the Jays last year. Had a rough spring training, but he's getting the call now because he's young, and we want to see him pitch, and he's facing David Hess. The pitcher for the Baltimore Orioles there tomorrow night, 7.07 first pitch at Rogers Center. Game two of the three game set, Andrew Kashner versus Marcus Stroman. Now speaking of the Yankees and the Orioles, Andrew Kashner in the first game of the year got lit up by the New York Yankees. And uh, he's facing the Jays, and I would gladly like to light his lamp too. That'd be great. Marcus Stroman looks to do an amazing job there on Tuesday uh, as he looks to build on that really, really good first start against 
I guess, in the home opener for the Blue Jays, and maybe get a get a victory out of that because he deserved the victory the first game. The Jays had no offense in that game, so they he looks to get in the victory column. He, he looks to pitch another solid game for this team, give another quality start, and in the end, give your team a chance to win. All right, and in Game Three of the series, the Jays. Fire uh, Matt Shoemaker to the mound, and for the Orioles, I'm not too sure yet, So, because I don't have it here. So we're going to find out soon enough. And for tomorrow's start against the Orioles, right, like I said, Sean Reed Foley in the mound, can we keep that scoreless inning streak for the starters going? Holy smokes, San or Sanchez gave you five, Thorne gave you five, Stroman gave you seven, Shoemaker's giving you seven, all scoreless. Beautiful job from the starting pitching uh, so far, and there's a couple missed pitches. A missed pitch to Nick Castellanos, you know, uh, from Thomas Pannone today. A missed pitch to, um, oh goodness, the big, the big, the young rook, the young lefty on the uh, on the Detroit Tigers. I forgot his name now. Uh, that hit the two run home run in the first game of the series. You know, just a couple of missed pitches has lost the games for the Jays. They've been in all these games. They've had opportunities to win all these games. And uh, look, they can do this, right? One game at a time. Like I said, take positives out of losses, all right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. You guys enjoyed this video, and you guys enjoyed the game overall. Sorry. You enjoyed Trent Thornton, Rowdy Telez, and the eighth inning, and, and, and Elvis Luciano. Hit that like button. I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below, guys. What would you think of the game? What would you think of the video? Also, your MVP in today's game. If you guys want to give that out there, go right ahead. I, my mind's Rowdy Telez because he's, he kept us in the ball game. Uh, but you can also give it to Trent Thornton, though, for firing up a Blue Jays record. So you could you have a few ways to go there. Also, your early impressions on the 2019 Blue Jays through the first season, uh, first series of the season, the four-game set against the Tigers, obviously split 2-2. What are your early thoughts on this team? I think, all right, it's going to be a fun year. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, ideally, we're not going to play Detroit every damn game because when you face teams like the New York Yankees, when you face teams like the Boston Red Sox, and the Cleveland Indians, and, and really good teams, you might not do so well. And there might be at times where it might be hard to scratch for positives. But today it was not like that. It was a good game. They lost in, in, in overtime, in extra innings. All right, so guys, Evan and I will talk to you guys podcast edition. Links are in the description for the podcast channel and for the podcast itself on iTunes. We'll talk to you guys Wednesday afternoon podcast edition. And Twitter is also down below. Follow up, send me a DM, do all that great stuff, and I will talk to you guys, what will it be? Uh, Raptors edition, it'll be Monday, was it Tuesday or Monday for the Raptors? But no, they play tomorrow on Monday as they welcome in the Orlando Magic to Scotiabank Arena. That team is dying for, playing for their playoff lives is the Orlando Magic and the Raptors looking to play spoiler and more or less lock up the second seed in the Eastern Conference. All right, that's a 7.30, I think it's a 7.30 there, tip off at Scotiabank Arena tomorrow night. Right, the Raptors look for their fourth straight victory. Don't know if Kawhi Leonard or Siakam or anybody's going to play tomorrow, but we're going to have to wait and see. It is April Fool, so anybody's screwing with you, don't let them, don't let it happen. If you're, if anybody's telling you Kawhi Leonard's going down a season-ending injury, make sure you hear it from the right source. All right, 7:30 uh, tip off there at Scotiabank Bank Arena tomorrow night. As for the Leafs, they take on the Islanders in Long Island tomorrow. And for goodness sakes, can the Jays, cl Mwah, the Leafs? Clinch a playoff spot in New York for John Flippin' Tavares. Last time he played in there, the Leafs crapped the bed and made them look silly and let Islanders boo him out of town, call him names, throw stuff at him, and the Leafs just sat there and played like garbage and got their butt wiped. How about we clinch a playoff spot on their home ice? Even though they're pretty close to it as well, but I don't care. You know, that's what I want to see tomorrow night. All right, and as for the Blue Jays, guys, they play tomorrow as well. We got another three games on us tomorrow night. It is going to be a long night tomorrow as the Jays welcome in the Baltimore Orioles to Rogers Center. David Hess versus Sean Reed Foley, 707 first pitch at Rogers Center. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you guys then.